Hello, my name is Sadiq Sani from University of Exeter Medical School. My current work involves single and multiple case studies of HIV prevention interventions to identify lessons that can be learned from implementing such interventions in sub-Saharan African schools. Today, I'm going to be discussing an overview of using case studies in public health interventions evaluation. I will start by explaining what is a case study. A case study is a form of social science research like experiments, surveys, histories, or archival analysis. Case study research has a history of use in health, social, and applied sciences. It has antecedents in history, sociology, psychology, anthropology, law, and medicine. Case studies are used to investigate a phenomenon in real-life context. In essence, case studies help to find out the effect of an intervention, event, policy, or any change implemented in a specific place and context. Several authors have contributed to the methodological development of case study research, which led to its increasing popularity amongst qualitative researchers. This also led to a confusion in name, nature, and the use of the term case study. Here I'm focusing on case study as an evaluation tool, not clinical case history used to study a particular case of interest in a clinical setting or as a teaching technique or aid used in education. Another key feature of case study is the use of more than one source of evidence, which will be discussed in more detail shortly. Now, I will discuss types of case studies, illustrating with few examples. Broadly speaking, a case study may consist of a single case, that is, investigating one intervention, policy, event, or a phenomenon. On the other hand, a case study may consist of multiple cases, that is, looking at more than one phenomenon. An example of a single case study is the one that studied an elderly married couple living with dementia. The case explored how the couple relationship contributes to the understanding of how spouses live with and respond to the impact of dementia. A good example of multiple case study is the one that examined communities across the United States that have developed innovative, coordinated community-based programs to assist rape victims. In this study, 22 communities with coordinated programs were studied alongside other 22 communities with less coordinated programs. This helped in determining how and why the programs were helpful to the rape victims. Not shown on the slide is another classification of case study by stake, which include intrinsic, instrumental, and collective. Intrinsic case is examined for inherent interest in the case, while instrumental is used as means to study an issue or phenomenon. Collective case, on the other hand, investigates several cases to provide an overall understanding of a problem. What sort of data are used in case study research? As mentioned previously, the hallmark of case study research is the use of multiple sources of evidence. The evidence may come from documents, archival records, interviews, direct observation of events, participant observations, or physical artifacts. Therefore, a case study may utilize both qualitative and quantitative data. Information from documents is likely to be relevant to every case study because documents serve as basis and augment evidence from other sources. For instance, documents can provide information from other sources as well as verify the correct spellings and titles or names of people and organizations that might have been encountered during other forms of data collection such as interviews. When do we do case studies? The choice of case study research is largely dependent 
on the research question one is trying to answer. Case study is relevant in explaining present event, for example, how or why a social phenomenon happened. Case study research can also be relevant when investigating a question that requires in-depth description of a social event. Additionally, it may be difficult to predict both negative and positive effects of unique and innovative programs, more so to document whether impacts results from the programs. Case study can provide information about a program and its context, which may allow others to assess its appropriateness to their context. Sometimes, a case study can be used as an evaluation tool to assess what worked easily or did not work in implementing a new program in a different setting. Also, emergence of an unanticipated outcome may warrant a case study to systematically find the reason for the outcome. In some situations, outcomes may be difficult to predict, especially in an unpredictable environment. A case study evaluation allows creation of full and complex picture of what happened in such environment. In evaluation context, Yin identified five purposes of case study, including descriptive, explanatory, exploratory, illustrative, and meta-evaluation. Now, I will discuss roles of case studies in evaluation of public health interventions. Basically, case studies have two main roles in evaluation. First, as research method, where a research is done to understand or learn from a new intervention or change. Second, where we learn from a previous case study that we want to apply to our own situation. Here, I will focus on lessons that can be learned from previous case studies for future public health interventions. Before we go further, there are some limitations of case studies that we should be aware of. Case studies are observational, non-randomized, and therefore not necessarily generalizable. They can be very complex, including many sources of evidence that may not be reliable. However, there are numerous advantages for doing case studies. Case studies are complementary to other methods that are useful for investigating and understanding processes and dynamics of change by studying events as they unfold in real life situation. Also, case studies are essential in determining factors critical to the implementation of a program or policy by allowing in-depth explorations of events in the socio-political setting in which they are implemented. Lessons from a single case study may not necessarily be generalizable. However, multiple case studies may generate generalizable results. And depending on the purpose of the inquiry, a case study can be completed within short period of time and written up in various lengths and forms. Now, how can we identify a good case study? A case study should answer a well-focused problem using appropriate research design on a representative population. It should use and clearly describe research methods that are valid and reliable. To reduce bias, a good case study should describe researchers' perspective, including the purpose for undertaking the study and analysis should be conducted by more than one investigator. Finally, the finding should be justified by the results, relevant to practice, and transferable to other settings. Now, how do we read a case study? When reading a case study, you should consider the questions you want to answer from the report and the ones answered by the case study. Then you determine the intervention evaluated in the case together with the population and outcome assessed. Next, what data is presented in the case and how they are collected. And finally, check if the findings are supported by the data. So how do we determine if a case study will be useful or relevant to our public health problems or issues? 
A case study is likely to be useful if you have similar context in terms of the public health problem in question, the population, resources, and the intervention you are planning to implement. Having a similar context will mean mechanism the intervention might work may be the same, and therefore expected benefit or impact may be similar. Finally, if you are thinking of doing a case study, here are some useful resources. A text of case study research design and methods by Yin, encyclopedia of case study research by Mills et al., and a document on using case study to do a program evaluation by the California Department of Health Services. I would like to thank Professor Mark Petrigree of London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Professor Charles Abraham, and Dr. Sarah Denford of University of Exeter Medical School for their contributions towards this presentation. Good luck with your case study. I personally find it interesting and useful.